Hi. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to splice a cassette tape. Now, I'm sure many of you have experienced this over the years. Maybe you have an old cassette and the tape itself has snapped. And you may be wondering, can I repair that? Yes, you can. It's actually not that difficult. Now, you may remember not that long ago, I did a video where I showed how to open a cassette shell that doesn't have screws. And I was able to open that cassette with an X-Acto knife. I just ran it around the outside of the tape and it basically popped open after doing that a few times. So this is the same tape. And as you can see down here, here is the cassette tape here and I have the two ends sticking out. So you have to have access to both ends of the snapped tape. Basically what you need, I would recommend a, a piece of cardboard or some newspaper. As you can see, I have a little table here and I have this piece of cardboard down because I'm going to be using the X-Acto knife to do some cutting and I don't want to scratch the top of the table. So that's why I laid down this piece of cardboard. Also, I'm going to be using some standard Scotch tape. Now, back in the day, you could get tape that was specifically designed for splicing. That type of tape is very hard to find nowadays, so for this demonstration, I'm just going to be using regular Scotch tape. Now, tape that is designed for splicing is usually very heat and age resistant. So if you can possibly find splicing tape, by all means, use it. But for this particular purpose, I'm just using regular Scotch tape. This isn't a valuable tape. Uh, it's not something that I really cherish. I don't even know what's on this cassette. And really, I just want to fix it long enough so that I can get one more play out of it so I can digitize it. As long as I can get one more pass of the tape, that's really all I'm aiming for. So for that purpose, regular scotch tape will be fine. I'm also going to be using a couple of coins just to hold the tape in place. Okay, so let's get started. So again, I'm going to make sure I pull out the tape, each end. Okay, and I'm going to lay it flat and I'm going to put a coin there to hold it in place, just like that. And what you want to make sure is the splice should happen on the side of the tape that does not come in contact with the cassette head, the tape head player. Uh, you, you want the tape to be on the other side, okay? So I want to make sure that I twist the tape in such a way that the side that comes in contact with the tape, the head of the tape player is facing down. And it's a little bit of a trick. But you want to get it out there. Again, you have to be kind of patient to do this. It takes, I've done this many times over the years, so I have a lot of practice. So, Be prepared to, you know, don't rush it. It's a, it's a job that's going to take some trial and error, especially if you've never done it before. So I've got that end of the tape lying down. I'll use the other coin to hold it. I'm going to try to lay the ends of the tape on top of each other. And it's going to be a little bit difficult because it, as you can see, the tape has a tendency, it wants to curl. So I'm going to try to get both ends together I want to just lay one end on top of the other. Now I'm noticing this is really proving to be a challenge because as you can see, the end of the tape is very, very curly. If it was flat, I could lay the ends down very easily over top of one another and then perform the, slide, the, the splice. But as you can see, the tape is very, very curly and just refuses to lay flat. I'll move the coin to see if that will help any. And that's helping a little bit. Move that there. I'll do the same with the other. Okay, so that helped a little bit. Now really what I'm trying to do, again, it's, it's a little bit tricky and it takes a lot of patience and a lot of trial and error. Again, I'm trying to lay one on top of the other. 
Kind of like that. Kind of like that. Now normally, if this tape was flat, I wouldn't have to do the next step. Because the tape is being very rolly and it doesn't want to lay flat, I think I'm going to have to add an extra step. So I'm just going to take a piece of tape Okay, so I managed to get one end of the tape on top of the other. And again, it's really helpful to have coins. They really help when you're trying to do this, especially when you have a tape that's very rolly like this one. So again, I'm just going to try to put down a piece of tape here. Okay, and I think we got it. All right. So what I'm going to do, again, normally I wouldn't have to do this part of the procedure if the tape wasn't so rolly. If the tape happened to be a bit flatter, this wouldn't be necessary. Basically, I need to do a diagonal cut across the, the two ends of the tape, right on over top of the two ends. So you'll see what I mean. I'm just going to do a diagonal cut. Just like that. So I did my diagonal cut. And now I'm just going to cut away the excess tape. I'm going to do a very fine cut along this side and another fine cut along this side. And hopefully that will be the end of our splice. I'll just move this coin out of the way. Okay, and I think essentially that should be it. So let's see if this worked. I'm just going to gently peel up the tape. Okay, and I think that worked. Yeah, so I'm going to rewind the tape back into, into the shell. And there we have it. I think that was a successful splice. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that worked. That looks like it uh, was a successful splice. Now, I will say, uh, the first time you play the tape after doing the splice, just make a mental note of where in, where in the tape that splice is located. So when you're playing the tape and you know that that splice is coming up, you just want to be aware of that because you never know. Uh, it could it could break again, it could snap again. You you never know for sure. So always make a mental note of where that splice is located on the tape, and beware of that as it's coming up when you're playing the tape. So it looks like that was a successful splice. Again, I'm really only looking to play this tape one more time. Again, it's not a super valuable tape, so I'm really only interested in getting one more pass out of it just so I can digitize the contents and see what's on the tape. So I will do that. I will play this cassette, I will digitize it, and I will let you know what's on it. This is something I've done a number of times, so I can do it fairly easily. But if it's something you've never done before, you might want to trial and error it a few times. Just just test it a few times before you actually do the final splice. I do recall years ago at Radio Shack they used to have a cassette splicer. I actually owned one back in the 80s and it was a very handy little uh, tool that helped me repair a lot of tapes. I don't even know if you can still buy these cassette splicers. If you can, they're very rare 
and they probably cost a lot more nowadays than they did back in the 80s. So thank you for watching. I hope you can join us again next time. And please, as always, subscribe to the channel. I post new tech reviews every week. And if you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you. We'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.